Eugene O'Neill's Dowhouse, The Way to Long Day's Journey into Night. A steep, winding road leads to the front gate of the house where Eugene O'Neill wrote Long Day's Journey into Night. Jean and his wife Carlotta built the house in 1937 using money from the Nobel Prize in Literature, which he had won in 1936. And it was meant to be a safe haven for their marriage and his creative work, far from the pressures of Broadway and intrusive family members and friends. They moved to California to escape the hot and humid climate of their previous home in Georgia, and they purchased an almond ranch outside of Danville, an hour east of San Francisco. They called it Dao House, invoking the ancient Chinese principle of Dao, meaning the right way, which expressed a sense of living in harmony and balance. Following traditional Chinese principles, they laid out an indirect pathway to the front door to divert any bad energy that might intrude. The garden courtyard establishes a union with the natural world, a healthy setting for the creative work inside. As in Long Day's Journey, the hedge required careful trimming, and Jean was often the one to do the work, following a morning of writing. The red front door, suggestive of happiness, fame, and power, opens to a foyer lined with masks from the traditional Chinese and Japanese theater, and a mirror tinted green, color of growth and hope. The living room ceiling, painted a rich blue, and the large blue-tinted mirror are suggestive of new beginnings and hospitality. Bookcases held many of the more than 4,000 books owned by the O'Neills. At the center of the house was the parlor, its walls lined with pictures from the O'Neill family history. It also had a radio to listen to war news and a large record collection, so music might often be heard coming from here. They called this Rosie's Room for the player piano, a gift from Carlotta to Jean. The bedrooms and Eugene's study were upstairs. Carved lion figures guard against malign spirits. Another guardian was Carlotta herself, whose bedroom at the top of the stairs served as a gateway to Jean's bedroom. On one wall hangs a black mirror, suggestive of depth, wisdom, perspective, but also hopelessness. Through a dressing area and a third door to block noisy distractions, lies the creative core of the house, Jean's study. At two desks, he pursued his creative work and projected plans for future work, surrounded by the many volumes of his notebooks. From one desk, he looked upon the serene courtyard. From the other, he saw Mount Diablo. Jean did his writing mostly in the morning and then would go downstairs for his lunch on the terrace or a swim in the pool. Now maintained by the National Park Service, the Eugene O'Neill National Historic Site is also the site of the Eugene O'Neill Foundation, which sponsors theater workshops and occasional performances in the old barn. A research library is available to scholars. Just beyond lies the gravesite of Blemmy, their beloved Dalmatian dog who died just after Jean finished the second draft of the play. In 1937, not long after moving into the house, Jean wrote, this is a final home and harbor for me. It was not to be, as wartime conditions necessitated moving away in 1944. But in this place he wrote those late great plays for which he is most remembered. The Iceman Cometh, Long Day's Journey into Night, Huey, A Touch of the Poet, and A Moon for the Misbegotten, 